little mic check with Miriam. Oh, hi. Check. What do you think of that? Should ankle? I come closer? Yeah. What do you want? Here we go. Euphoria Wellness Spa Cafe. I've got an Americano. You're rocking a Perrier. Clint. Cheers to you. Cheers to you, my friend. Congratulations. Thank you. I could say the same to you. Miriam Monsef. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My first official guest of the Tiffany Show. Thank you That's again for joining me today. My first episode, my first guest. I'm pretty excited. We've rolled up to Euphoria Wellness Spa Cafe. I'm caffeinated. You're not. This is sparkling water. Sparkling water. Ain't nothing wrong with Perrier. Fine. <laughs> uh, so we could just look up Miriam Monsef. I could Google you. I could check you out on Wikipedia. But who are you? Who yeah, are you? you? Who is Miriam in her own words? You could Google and see like all sorts of fun and not so fun stuff. Fair. But who am I? I am a woman living in Peterborough, Ontario. I am the daughter of a single mom. And I'm the older sister to two others. Uh, I'm an aunt. I'm a wife. I'm an expectant mother. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a former parliamentarian and cabinet minister. And I came to Canada as a refugee, an Afghan refugee. And Peterborough gave me a second chance. And pretty blessed. Remarkable. Blessed, hardworking. I feel like it, it takes some grit to get to achieve the things that you have achieved given the circumstance that you were dropped in here. When did you, when did you come to Canada? 1996. How old were you? 11. Oh my gosh. You're not so a fun me. age. No. Not a fun age. Shout out to the 11 year olds out there. Yes. The 11 year olds coming up on a big move. That's going to be okay. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, be okay. okay. That's right. I had a big move when I was young too. Really? Where yeah. from? My, uh, my parents had divorced when I was 14 and my dad always dreamed of having a house on the lake. So he uprooted us from Hamilton ah. and moved us to Bancroft. Yeah. It was, okay. it was, uh, it was a bit of a, bit of a change, bit of a shift, but we got through it. So if you're moving and you're young and you're out there, it gets better. Divorce is hard, yes. especially on little kids. It was. Yeah. And you're the baby. I was talking to your sister oh before we started. <laughs> so I know everything. Yeah, now. I'm the baby of the no family. <laughs> you are right. A little bit of a suck for sure. And then, um, yeah, I mean, we, we had quite a bit of loss. So I think in, in four years, my parents got divorced. I lost my great grandmother, my no, no, my, my grandfather. So it was just sort of, yeah, a bit, a bit compounded. Holy you know? moly, Tiffany. Yeah, we've all got a story, right? We how did you story? How did you cope with all that? I think it took time. I honestly I feel like most of it I ended up not unpacking until maybe my twenties when I realized that I was struggling harder than I should or harder than others were. Mm. And then I realized that maybe some of my behaviors weren't, you know, weren't weren't healthy. And so I started to kind of un unpack those things, I think, through the years, which is probably my biggest life lesson. It's like, <laughs> unpack your trauma, face it, sit with it, feel it, you know, it's the only way to recognize it. And then you can kind of adjust it and move forward from there. Oh, wow. We should do more of these. I know, right? Maybe we'll, every Friday we'll just come and, grab <laughs> <laughs> come and grab a bevy, have a share. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so you've done a lot. In your life especially with your career your education the lives that you've touched but most recently you've done a huge pivot a rebound a reignite a spark up a level up you've launched onward that's right can you share what is on onward for those watching maybe they haven't seen onward is a business i set up after doing my eat pray love post politics and its purpose and the work my team and I are doing is to support other leaders, specifically, but not exclusively, women leaders, those who are around the big boys table and emerging leaders, those we encourage to step up. You know, if you can see it, you can be it. OK, but once you get there, things get done a certain way and things don't get done in other ways. So what if we could support badass women 
who make all that, you know, sacrifice and get to the big tables, to those decision making tables so that they can thrive instead of struggle. And I base it on my own personal experience, um, having been in cabinet, having learned a lot of lessons the hard way. If I can make it a little bit easier for other women, particularly who are leading, then it's a life well lived and we keep those women at decision making tables and our economy grows and our community are stronger and our daughters and sons and our grandchildren are better off because they see their example and their impact. So that's onward. It's like bridging that gap, right? When, when women get to kind of that next level and it's like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know who to turn to. What, how do I handle this situation? Where do I go to navigate this? Yeah. You're the in-between to get us the information to move into the next level. Yeah, what I wish I had. I wish I had known I could a reach need. out, right? Yeah, filling you a gap, the hole, trying. Yep, absolutely. Well, we talk about kind of holes and, and fires and reasons, and and they always say, um, you know, they say it on almost every single motivational talk. It's like, what is your why? Yes. Why do you get up in the morning? What fuels you? Who are you getting up for? Why do you keep getting back up when you've gone down? What's your why? Why do you keep getting back up? I've seen you get knocked down and you come back up and you're, you always come back, you know, a bit spicier, a bit <laughs> feistier, you know? Well, part of it is I come from a long line of very stubborn women, like these, these Afghan women who've gone through a lot. They keep getting up and they keep going. But my North Star, even before politics, has been building a world, communities where women and their families are thriving. So even on the hardest of days, if you know your why, right? If, if you know your why, like those motivational videos tell you, you'll get out of bed. If you face defeat, if you face setbacks, minor or major, you'll keep pushing forward because your purpose is bigger than you and your ego. So you keep pushing. And if you're fortunate enough, like I've been, you're surrounded by people who will see the value in supporting you along that journey and step up for you again and again nurture you along the way get those key people in your circle right that's everything and would you attribute that to like reigniting your spark too we've all been there tough times you know you lose your spark maybe it's just a little bit of a coal someone needs to come over and help you out do you like how do you how do you reignite it what's your what's your best piece of advice for maybe finding it again if, if we're feeling a bit overwhelmed a bit at the base of a mountain well the last time i was at the base of the mountain or rock bottom <laughs> uh, wasn't too long ago uh, and you know realigning yourself so that you're clear on your purpose like am I still me do I still like me you know how is this horrible awful moment with all the feels it comes with how is it shaping me to be better and stronger so pay attention to those lows because there are a lot of gifts and lessons in them so that's the first thing I would say my superpower if i have one it's i have the the ability to build really strong teams and i've always been so fortunate to have really great people in my life and certainly with onward like neil carrie janish oh, yeah. we've got you know a few more stepping up clint like this is an incredible team that believes in that vision and they push forward and then if you're so burnt out that you've just completely lost the fire in the belly which happened to me, take the time to rest. Right. And women don't do that easily. We don't give ourselves permission to do that. So give yourself the gift of time, as Oprah would say. <laughs> and take that time to rest and realign. You're absolutely right. And, and taking those those moments to kind of reflect. And, and they say, you know, especially when it comes to burnout, there's there's two ways out, right? A huge vacation, a big break, or a big significant life change. Yeah. Yeah, really, really interesting to kind of hear hear that be aligned with with also sort of how how I feel. Also, it's extra, you know, just kind of digs me a little bit deeper in why we love Miriam. <laughs> well, and what you did, right? Like, it takes courage to face your trauma. It takes courage to own your baggage and then sort through it, like you were describing in your twenties. And if you don't do that, then it builds up and it weighs you down and it clouds your judgment and manifests itself in other ways i find too right exactly sometimes you see that in like frustration at, at 
at things that wouldn't normally bother you. It starts kind of coming out in a, in a different vein. So you got to got to address it. And so with Onward, we're, we're still making differences. We're, we're changing lives. And, and this just seems to be a theme with you in your life. So was there a moment that you decided, like, yes, I'm going to dedicate my life to making other human <laughs> beings better, to making life for other people better? Was there, like, a pivotal moment, or has this just been kind of seeded in you through, through grit, through family, through strong women? I think from a very young age, I knew that if the people around me are doing well, things are calmer, things are more peaceful, and if they're not, then I'm not. Life isn't. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, being born a refugee and then traveling between borders, um, losing a parent at a young age. Um, you know, I remember at nighttime, uh, family would be huddled around the radio listening for news is the war over yet can we go home or you know can can people come back home um and so you know when we had really tough questions and i don't know about you but you know my grandpa was in my life until i was 20 years old and he was a big big presence in my life and my sisters and i we took advantage of like this old man, this elder, who's like a big deal in the family. He spent a lot of time with us and we'd ask him, Grandpa, why did these horrible things happen to us? And he'd say, the suffering happens so that you know what it's like to feel pain. And so you ease it for other people. And he saw greatness in us. He told us, all three of us girls from a very young age, which is a very rare thing to do in my culture, to tell three little girls who don't have a father we were facing a pretty bleak future that you're going to grow up to do great things. So he believed in, in us. It led us to believe more in ourselves. And he said, if it hurts right now, it's okay. You're going to grow up to make things better for others. And so that's kind of always stayed wow. with me. It's a good coping mechanism. Yeah, definitely. And absolutely when it comes to kind of your mission and fundamentally why you vibrate on that frequency of helping others and, and, and being kind and, and taking care and building building others up. It sounds like your grandpa was the one that taught you how to dream big then. Most certainly, and my mom too. But then, you know, we've come to Peterborough as teenagers or preteens, and it matters the kind of environment you continue to grow up in, right? Had Peterborough not been a caring community, right? Had Peterborough right. not had a culture of we look out for one another and when someone's down, we lift them up and we dream big and we make good things happen. I don't think that that spark, that fire that my grandpa lit, lit in us would have continued to grow. Right. Would have so Peterborough very much created the conditions to, okay, well, do-gooding is the thing to do here and it feels good and... <laughs> You can make a difference. Let's go. Yeah. You know, that is so true. And as somebody who's a transplant to Peterborough, like when I was 18, I came here, there was no, this is where I was coming to go to school. And like, to, to, to sort of hear that you've had that similar experience with the community. You're right. Like if you can't help, but show up because everybody is showing up for each other. And, and when you sort of find, find those like minded, um, it really, it really does kind of keep that fire going. Did you, you've spoken up, you, 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 you raise your voice, not raise your voice, but you raise your voice uh, when something's not right. And, and do you, do you have someone specific as like, would you say like your mom is the one that kind of pushed you to speak up, to have the courage to speak up when something's not right? Or was it kind of a contributing family factor? Oh, um, people aren't born that way, right? Well, my mom and grandpa, there were there were periods where we weren't in school as little girls, so they would homeschool us. And part of the training we got, like, I remember being really, really small, and they'd kind of put us in front of the room and they'd give us something to read. They taught us how to read at like four years old. So they'd say, stand up and read. And, you know, in loving, kind way, give advice on how to deliver a message. Yeah, do this with your eyes, do this with your hands, pause here. Yeah. Uh, and Whoa. I didn't, un obviously I didn't understand at times, like a fun little game. Yeah. I'm a people pleaser. So yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm doing a good sure. job. <laughs> they think I'm doing a good job. I'll keep doing it. But, you know, 
I, I, they gave me a tool, yeah. a gift that I could use. And then I went to PCBS and PCBS. Oh, that makes sense. Arts program, yep. you know, you, you work on that craft, you become more comfortable or I, I did anyway with who I was. And then there's the whole battle over closing PCBS. And that was a big politicizing moment for me. I went to the UN with the YWCA uh, as one of their volunteers. Um, and that was a big politicizing moment for me. I went to the Commission on the Status of Women in 2012. Uh, and, you know, they tried to cut transit, city transit services, um, you know, around that same time. And I relied on the bus. And, you know, it didn't make any sense, this, this decision. And so the community rallied around, like, please don't do that. And that was a politicizing moment for me. But, like, Tiffany, for me, I can't fight every battle I've learned. But what got me on this path of advocacy and eventually, you know, advocacy as a politician, you know, I, I got angry. I would, spend, I would spend Monday nights in the city council chambers for fun, live tweeting what was happening because I was curious how the system worked. Yeah. And I, thought it was so cool that I could just sit there and observe and kind of let the community know what was going on. And then, you know, both at the municipal level and um, other levels of government, I started to notice that, you know, decisions were being made on behalf of people like me by folks who had no idea what it was like to be us. People were making decisions about cutting transit services who never even been on a bus people making decisions about poverty reduction and services who have never gone to the grocery store swipe their card and not know if it's going to be approved or not so you know that's okay i don't want to hold people's privilege against them but as a decision maker if you don't know what that's like and you're not willing to listen to the people who have that lived experience and they tell you no i need the bus to get to work and back because if i don't i'm spending fifty dollars going to work and coming back in a cab yep. and i might as well not work because i work minimum wage on a sunday and i can barely get by so you know i got mad about that and you know when you have people encouraging you the first time you get up either saying like here's what you could do to improve it you should keep up the good work. Here's the next meeting. Why don't you join this committee, that committee? It kind of builds you up. Yeah. Well, well done. Because it's you're right in that space. It's how are they making these decisions without that lens, right? You have to just inject yourself, take action, right? Like that's an action we can all take. Yeah. Attend a city council meeting. Yeah. And they listened. We got our services back. Like the system worked. It was a lot of work it was a lot of you know hustling but it worked and it still does and the more we engage in the process the stronger the system that allows for citizens input gets the less we care the less we stand up yep. the less we speak up the weaker these democratic systems get and that is what we do not need we need to no. inject ourselves and be heard and be seen so when, when it comes to women stepping into these roles, we kind of talked about onward and, and helping elevate them kind of the to the next level. Um, I'm definitely try to consider myself like a, a woman's woman. I like to be a woman builder. I don't like to look at other women and be jealous. I like to look at other women and celebrate what they can do that I cannot do. Um, what is your advice? Or I'd like to know what you feel or what you think supporting women should look like. What does that look like to you? It depends on the woman. Um, so first, be kind. You know, you know, the world is hard enough as it is for women, especially those in leadership positions under the spotlight. There is plenty of room, you know, for other women leaders at tables, literally, there is a need to have more women's voices and a diversity of women's voices at various yes. tables. We don't need to compete and be kind because 
you also never know that woman who, you know, you may not even give a second thought to could be the woman who teaches your kid, who gives you your first mortgage, who ends up, you know, being your doctor, who ends up being your representative. So be kind also because you never know. And too often we women, too often we women, this happens in every room when we get down to it. We don't need to hold each other back. No, agreed. Be on each other's team. Yeah. We're fighting for the same. Yeah. And share what you've learned, especially Ooh. if you've learned it the hard way. Yeah. I was, I was speaking to the Seroptimist last week and we were talking about resiliency and lessons learned throughout COVID. And these are like incredible women who are using their privilege to make our community better through like supporting EFRI and YWCA, but also making the world a better place yeah. and they're nurturing the next generation of leaders. So these women were, for the most part, were doing well during COVID. They learned lessons about how to deal with hard things. And, you know, I look at my niece's generation, right? Feisty 13 year olds oh, yes. who like know way too much about too much already. But at the same time, I've spent the last three years in isolation they haven't, you know, picked up the same social skills and the life experiences. And, you know, especially young people, they're still hurting yeah. from the impact of COVID. So what if those of us who've learned lessons the easy way or the hard way started sharing those lessons more broadly, more loudly with the next generation? And like... I just, I keep getting emails too from like high school students who are like, I want to learn about leadership and, you know, qualities of a good leader and how can I step up? So there's a thirst, is the, the yeah. myth that young people don't care is unhelpful. Yeah. So she, there's a thirst for this kind of knowledge. Share that. I love that because I was, I was going to ask you if, if we could just get a message out right now to two young women, what would that be? Oh my gosh, the world needs you. You are the most powerful generation of young women to have ever lived, ever. I have chills. It's, yes, you, you are so powerful. And especially Canadian women, you're the most educated women in the world. And for all the hardship, for all the trauma, there are supports and resources out there for you, but you're the most powerful generation of women to have ever lived and the world is counting on you to find your voice, to find your networks, to find your purpose, your North Star, and to lift others up along the way. So if you need a mentor, reach out and ask for someone's time. Like almost everyone's going to say yes to 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Yes, you can have 20 minutes. And especially if you're young, you know, people... People like you more, <laughs> so reach out. Don't be shy. And people like to help, right? Like people if someone like to comes help. to me and is, is looking for information, advice, and opinion, whatever, people like to look at you. You came out of, to help me. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be a part of this. You dreamed something, and then you did it, and I get to be a part of it. No, we just exciting. jumped. See, ladies? Yes. Young ladies, we, you, you've got us. I do. I feel like the next generation has our back. Sometimes when I when I look at things that are happening in the world, I do it can be very easy to get dark and, and sad about things. And I remind myself that young people are really driving a force and they're really stepping up and driving messages and making change now. Um, so so I love that we we took a minute to shout you all out and tell you all to keep keep going and we believe in you. Don't be afraid. Do There's not be all afraid. sorts of systems in place to make you doubt yourself to make you be afraid of failure, to make you be afraid of criticism or social rejection. You're never going to please everybody. Don't be afraid. The world needs you, and there's a ton of support out there. You're right, and we make mistakes, right? It's, it's hard, part of human nature. No matter what we do, we're going to make mistakes. We'll learn, we'll pivot, we'll move from there, and every mistake has a lesson, just like every dark hole has its silver lining. So when it comes to big lessons within life, in work, in your career, can you share with us, like, maybe what, what mistake has given you the biggest lessons? What's the biggest lesson out of your career that you've, you've kind of taken with you and maybe injected into Onward, maybe injected into your, your future goals, your future vision? Yeah. Um, I do a lot of public speaking now. So, you know, people invite me to go in and speak at their 
you know, corporate retreats or at university campuses. And particularly when I'm talking to young people around this topic of setbacks, mistakes, failures, you know, I ask them, like, raise your hand if, you know, you know what you want to do with your life. And about half of the room raises their hands. And then I say, raise your hand if, you know, you want to address climate change, reconciliation, world peace, you know, poverty. And the hands all go up, right? These are really big, hard things that are all about changing the status quo. And what I tell them then is like, that's great, keep it up. Your desire and your concern for these issues is changing, you know, workplace cultures, is changing yeah. recruitment and yes. uh, retention strategies for the best employers is because you care about these issues, but be prepared for it to be really hard. Be prepared for there to be dark days where you just can't fight it can't fight anymore where you feel like i've lost the fire in the belly be prepared for days where you can't even get out of bed and that's where your why comes in right knowing why you're here knowing your purpose if you're fortunate enough to know that that'll get you out of bed and that'll get you persevering um but for me personally, um, let's, I mean, there have been many setbacks, but let's, let's rewind to the most recent setback, which was on September 20th, 2021, I lost the election to represent my community. It was giving me so much in Ottawa. So I lost my seat in parliament. Um, I was also a cabinet minister, so I had a seat around the federal cabinet. Um, and at the time, I had three departments that I worked with, so I lost the opportunity to be a minister, and losing sucks, yeah. whether, you know, yeah. it's student politics or any level of politics, um, losing hurts, it stung, that loss stung. Um, I also, around the same time, because it was such a toxic election, uh, you know, there was some ugliness with, you know, hateful billboards and, you know, the, the accusation that somehow I was a sympathizer to the very same evil people who have caused so much hurt and pain to my family and to my home country. That hurt. Yeah. But Tiffany... Nothing hurts as much as losing Afghanistan to the very same evil men who 20 years ago we said we were going to save Afghan women from. Yeah. That still hurts. So what did that teach me? Lots of lessons. Like I said, I took a time out and like actually processed what was happening and, you know, I had the good sense and the privileges to be able to get a therapist, to get a coach, to sleep a lot, to just listen to my head, to write a lot. I spent three weeks not talking to anybody and that cleared my mind, even though I'm like very much a people person. Yes. Um, I spent a lot of time on the yoga mat and the prayer mat and I learned first of all that my North Star hasn't changed and taking the time to do the reflection taught me that, that was important. I took the time to, and I filled notebooks of like lessons I learned, things I enjoyed, things I didn't in that chapter of my leadership experience. And you know, I was able to pick up the phone and talk to former politicians, current leaders, current politicians, but also people who work within the public sector and particularly public service um, and said, okay, well, how do things you know, here's how something went. What could I have done to get better results? So I spent time wow. reflecting because there is no guide. There's no handbook they hand you when you step into these leadership positions. God knows I looked. So I thought I'd build one for myself, Great idea. for my sanity. Yes. Um, and, you know, around the same time that I was going through all that, I had picked up the phone to call about 100 leaders across the country, um, most of them women, um, and they were so generous with their time. They talked to me and 
they they reminded me a there are other ways to make a difference than politics even though i think it's one of the most effective ways to make a difference but there are other ways there are other ways that i'd learned things that very few people have learned and that i had an opportunity to share those lessons if i wanted to and i could take them with me to the next experience wow. so it's not at all a loss because i leave that experience having gained wisdom and they also reminded me that so much work to be done and the pain that i was feeling well every person i spoke with was carrying some sort of pain some sort of hardship and you know i was in this really fortunate position to just be able to focus on me and piecing back what had been broken yeah and other people that i spoke with were just you know going full speed ahead wow. in dealing with the challenges so it taught me gratitude and of course you know i learned that i could help ease that pain i could help fill a gap as one of the people one of the incredible women i called said she's like you can fill gaps so you know find the gaps that prevent the world from you know realizing your vision and step up um and then just like you do every time you go through something hard Tiffany you realize oh i'm so much stronger than i thought i was right so much stronger so true yep yeah. wow i'm just sort of taking a second to kind of process yeah, what everything you just it? said it was beautiful and it makes sense and it's sort of inspirational and still fuels other people to keep keep on keeping on right when you called these other women was there like kind of a number one question you were going for to ask them or was it just kind of a general conversation with each of them I mean you know what's your best advice for me um is a good general question um you know where do you see me being helpful um but I also asked them how they were doing because you know I'm yeah I'm anchored in community that's my grounding and that's what sucked about covid was i had disconnected from all that um but you know being anchored in community i feed off that that's my energy and like you know like i said if the people around me aren't doing well then that tells me something about how i'm doing too yeah. and what i can be doing that's a great point yeah like checking in on them and seeing how they're doing was like the key because it helped me see where I could offer value add also for the gap that you all were talking about on those calls yeah and it's interesting because i would feel like if i were in your shoes never been in your shoes but if i were what happened to you might have been my greatest fear hmm. now that you've been through all of that you took the time and thoughtfulness to take care of yourself and heal. And yes, that was definitely in, in a in a privileged space, but you still recognize that that needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Some people might pack it away and it manifests 8 years later. Yeah, I just had no more room to pack it away. <laughs> it's time to unpack it all. <laughs> Stop. Like we're going to address this yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, what are you afraid of now? Oh my gosh. Yeah, every time I've gone through a hardship, a setback, a big fall, you know, I get back up, dust myself off and I'm like, "Huh, that was horrible, but it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought." And still standing, still here. Um, so that's a gift, yep, right? Because then you face the next obstacle or the next opportunity with more heart, with more courage. Um, yeah like what's the worst thing that could happen uh and the worst the last worst thing was the braver you get for the next thing yes. if you're fortunate if you're if you're surrounded by the people the right people who also believe in you right um what am i afraid of now um this is like a therapy session now <laughs> what am i most afraid of <laughs> i'm afraid honestly in canada I'm afraid that there are forces let me rephrase that I know there are forces at work every day to diminish the trust 
people have in themselves yep. and in institutions that are key to Canada's success. And those forces win. They win when we stop believing that we can make a difference. Yes. And I'm afraid when I see the misinformation, the disinformation, the active courting of, you know, misogynists and haters that make people think that the world is much harder and much more hateful than it really is because yes. that takes away people's hope yes. and belief that it's going to be okay. And when you lose that, it's really hard to regain hope and to regain confidence. But, you know, when you lose that hope and that belief in yourself and, you know, I can make tomorrow better, I can make tomorrow better, I can make life better for my kids and grandkids, well, the bad guys just won. Yep. And their yep. plan for our country and for the world isn't one concerned with climate change and reconciliation and equity. It's, it's a different world order. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of. Same. And, and women, I'm going to be direct, and women not stepping up into leadership roles because they've sort of seen what happens to other women in leadership roles. And I feel like that's why human beings, people like you, Miriam, are remarkably important to humans, human nature, community, um, because you encourage us all to keep going, keep trying. When you fall down, when the fire goes out, find your why, pick it back up, move forward, jump in, build the nut on your way down. It's, um, it is, it's a scary thing to see. It's a scary thing to see comment sections, whether, whether it's, it's tough, I, you know, you, you keep on scrolling by and I personally try to put positive things out there because um, it's the lights in life that are, that are going to connect us all, right? Because most people and most of human beings are good at heart and um, we just need to not be discouraged by what we're seeing, what we're reading, the non-truths of it all. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're lucky and this community is very, very lucky to have you. And I am very lucky to know you. That's so nice. So, Tiffany, can I say though, like we need not give in to that despair, right? Like there is, there is something we can do to counter those hateful forces, yes. especially online, right? Yes. You know, yeah, it sucks to see, um, my husband hates the word sucks, so sorry, Matt. Um, sorry, Matt. But it's not good. Uh, it's not encouraging to see, yep. you know, woman after woman who stepped up in a leadership position be taken down for sometimes the silliest things. But, you know, one, progressives particularly, we can do something about that. You know, stand up for her. On yes. social media. Yes. And I've seen it happen locally. I've benefited from it locally. Like, send her a note of encouragement when it's really, really tough. Like, be part of that grace under pressure for her. Yes. Don't, don't just scroll past the haters who are making accusations or, you know, putting uninformed, deliberately wrong information out there. Correct the record. Yes. You can do that. You have the power to do that. And, you know, I understand people are like, oh, I just don't want that kind of toxicity in my life. I don't want to deal with it. It's too much. Fair enough. But unchecked, if they keep getting away with it, their voices grow. Yeah. And if the reasonable people are quiet, then the noise we hear is the noise of the hateful. And then they end up making us think that that's how the world really is. So, that's that's one way and i will also say this like no matter how wonderful you are as a leader and i've seen so many women leaders that i look up to be you know torn apart on social media unfairly oh, for yeah. silly things that don't even no matter how, and i say to myself well if she's getting attacked then yeah. like these folks clearly are not reasonable like first of all recognize that the more of us there are the less hate and the less criticism will be directed at just one. So yes. we are stronger together. And second, accept 
that unlike what we've been taught as little girls all our lives, our job is not to please everybody. And you don't have to be nice to everybody because some people mistake kindness for weakness. So, yes. you know, when we step up and speak firmly against that kind of crap, we do all of us a favor, not just the person we're sticking up for. You are right. And there's there's a way to do it, right? There, there is a there's way, a to, way do to do it. And I often think, too, in these comment sections, right, I wouldn't walk by you on the street and watch somebody treat you that way. True. You know, and it's just, I feel, you know, like, I don't know if it's that short-sightedness or people kind of lose that that connection, but it's like people in leadership, whether you agree with everything they've done or not, at the end of the day, they're also human beings. And and I feel like maybe maybe that gets forgotten. That we're all we're all these human beings at the end of the day and we need support and, and to reach out and send those message when when you know somebody has kind of been taken down and and uh it's a beautiful thing and, and we gotta keep keep speaking up, keep typing up, keep, keep, keep throwing it in there, you know, keep, keep driving that narrative, that, that positive, I've got your back sister narrative, you know? I'm speaking to some teachers in a couple of weeks about, you know, civic engagement. And I, as you're talking, I'm like, okay, maybe one of the things that we can start sharing and teaching, particularly young people early on, is how to disagree without yes. being a jerk. Yes. And I feel like if anybody can figure out how to do that, it's Canadians. Here's how you disagree with someone without being hateful. Here's how you make your point and like please disagree. Yes. Like there's there's value in that. Like I said, when people, you know, stop engaging in the democratic process, when people stop having a say, like we're in a very scary, scary place. So don't stop that. But perhaps something we can do is learn more effective ways to speak up, to express our opposition to an idea or a decision than just like completely tearing people down because what happens when good people stop stepping up? Who takes those seats? Yeah, exactly. What kind of decisions are made then? You know, do our sons and daughters watch and say, I'm not putting my hand up for anything yep. because who needs that? Yep. Right? And then where will, where will Canada be? Yeah. Teach them that dialogue. I think one of my favorite things I've been trying to implement lately is when when I hear something or see something I don't think is right, I'll ask the person, what did you mean by that? Because hmm. I'm finding it almost makes them take a pause to hmm. think about what they just said to you, hmm. what they just typed. That's a really helpful yeah. phrase. What do you mean by that? If we weren't recording, I'd write that down. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like write down helpful words and phrases that I'm like, oh, I'm really glad Yeah. Someone. Yeah, you carry it with you, yeah. write it on a post-it. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Speaking of words and phrases, it's fast question time, Marianne. Oh my gosh. It's been a great discussion with you. you. I'm grateful. Yes, get that water in because I'm going to rapid fire you some questions. Get to know you on a different level. Oh dear. Favorite coffee? If we were, is it Americano? It's an Americano. Yeah. What kind of milk or is it just straight up a black Americano? Well, up until politics... It was black, <laughs> sufficient, in and out. But now I add a little bit of milk. Little syrup, little latte. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Spicy, medium, mild. What does Miriam go for? Define spicy. Like, are you talking about heat? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I don't like heat. Do I don't like, like the heat. Food. No. no. I would say mild, but I like spices. Like I like cinnamon and turmeric okay, yeah. and black pepper. And those are staples in, in cooking. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. So not mild, spicy. not spicy as in hot. Yeah. Not an episode of hot wings or wild wings or whatever they call it. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Favorite female artist. Can be any artist. Can be a painter. Can be a singer. Whatever you want. Oh my goodness. Favorite female so artist. Many. Okay. So today I was listening to Shania Twain and I was like, lady, you are badass. It, right? And a gem. A Canadian. She's like the Canadian Dolly Parton. She's just so cool. Yeah. And, she, and talk about setbacks, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Chantelle Kraviatsik is coming to Peterborough on yes. December 6th. I'm excited to see her. I'm excited about the work that she's done, uh, particularly around Ukraine. Uh, so, you know, I have many favorites, but because I listened to Shania today and I'm looking forward to Chantelle, later at Market Hall uh, in December, I'm going to 
going to stick with those two. I'm glad Market Hall is back. They've done a whole like rejig with their sound system, eh? It's beautiful. So artists like really love performing there because of the, the acoustics. Well, and Chad and Patricia and the whole team there are just so easy to work with and yeah, that space is filled with goodness. Yeah, agreed. It's all good vibes. Market yeah. Hall. Come for food. So we're talking. It's been a rough day. We're ugly kidney bean crying <laughs> on the couch. What are we going to the fridge to grab? What's coming out of the cupboard? Okay, so there's this Afghan dish called osh. It's like a soup. Ooh. Um, so that's like super comfort food. Um, my, my sister and my brother-in-law used to have a restaurant in Peterborough. They used to have Ariana, and then they opened up Silk Roots. They they were my comfort food. So, you know, people talk to me about two, three things around the community. Right. And one of the top three things is, like, lamenting about how horrible <laughs> life is now that we can't have their kubide and rice and their <laughs> eggplants and their osh. And, yeah, I miss their food. If I wanted to try osh, I've never tried it myself. Yeah. I love trying new food. Where where do you think I should roll up to? Well, you should come over. Oh, all right. We'll do and, that. And, like, we'll make Jesus it happen. Okay, cool. We'll make it happen. I can make you some spaghetti and meatballs. I love spaghetti and okay, meatballs. Okay, I make it from scratch, too. It's not Shut bad. the front no door. No super, yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. It's on. Next on uh, next on the <laughs> Tiffany show, <laughs> Penne for your thoughts, where Mary ah. and I make pasta and talk. <laughs> love it. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Osh, comfort food, definitely going to try it. What was your first job? Um, my first job where I got paid to do something. Yes. Okay. First was, paid job. Um, our neighbor downstairs at the housing complex we lived in. She would pay me $20 a day to help deliver Avon brochures. Um, she was a cancer survivor and like she was a nice lady and she was giving me $20. Yeah. I know, right? So that was like the That's first day. But like the first job where I had to get a bank account, yes. I was a delivery um, agent. I was a newspaper courier for Peterborough This Week. Yes. Shout out to Peterborough This Week. How old were you? like 12 oh, i love that yeah. <laughs> but i recruited my sisters to help me oh, so it was always in a <laughs> yeah born entrepreneur family <laughs> affair i uh my first job i was 14 and worked at a cineplex slinging popcorn oh that's a fun job I is it yes i okay. loved it and i'll never forget because i was obviously the baby on the team i was 14, 14 years old working downtown hamilton used to get to and from work on my own yep sometimes my dad would take me sometimes i would take the bus whatever needed to happen um but i will never forget that one time they had this competition for sales i didn't know what sales were mm -hmm. i barely knew what i was doing I rocked that 101 Dalmatians contest. I beat the other players on the team. I had to share that even though this interview is about you. No, that's, <laughs> that's a big milestone. That was a good one, right? That's when I discovered, well, maybe I can sell things. <laughs> so binge shows. Are you like a Crave Netflix? Okay, so I just finished watching Game of Thrones. Ooh. But like I actually paid attention to it this oh, time. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's commitment. Yeah, I actually paid attention to it. I like have it in the background as I'm doing my schoolwork. Oh, wow. Um. It's just helpful, helpful noise. So Fair. I pay more yep, yep. attention to it than I, yeah, Game of Thrones. Another good mini series that I've watched is Made. That's on Netflix. Oh, everybody's going on about really Made. well done. Yes. Really well done. Um, yeah, those uh, those two. Yeah, I have a lot of Game of Thrones in my brain right now. Wow. So, All so right. I need All a right. Cleanse. <laughs> I'm in the Hallmark movie zone. Oh, Fun fine. fact about me, I don't watch any um, TV or movies that upset me. So if it's like stressful or dark or sad or like terrible things are happening, I'm like, if this is my entertainment, <laughs> <laughs> I should only be entertained. I cry enough as it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're not alone. Uh, I like that stuff too. But you know who really likes Hallmark, Ooh. particularly Christmas Hallmark movies? Neil Morton. Neil I outed Morton. you, Neil. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> oh, I guess we're going to have a Hallmark movie fest. Well, why not? And you can bring the popcorn. I have to make a list, absolutely. I'll bring Osh. Yeah, I'm good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Miriam, if you could step in my shoes today and oh ask yourself a question. What? For people to know. What would you, what would you, what do you want people to know? What would you ask yourself? If 
you've asked me a lot of like deep probing deep things. ones, right? There was a moment there where like I went right into it, eh? I loved it. Mm. It was juicy. That's what I'm here for. Hmm. Like you've even written them down. There's like 11 things written down right? on the cards that you haven't flipped over. <laughs> oh, well, Stu Harrison just retired. And I didn't get to submit a video for him. Oh. We yeah. can do it right now. Can we? Yeah, let's tag Sweet. him in this video. Okay. All right, here, I'll move out of the way. No, stay, yeah. stay, stay. <laughs> okay. Um, you work with him, right? I do, yes. Yeah. An amazing leader in this community. He Believes really in people. is. Yeah. He really is. Right, Stu so Harrison. You're retired. You're retired, and I'm very happy for you, and I hope you're getting lots of sleep, and that you and your wonderful wife, Sydney, have lots of time in your collective retirement. You've made our community better. You made our economy stronger. And for me personally, you have been a constant role model of how an effective leader gets things done. So thank you for the influence you've had in my life, for the work you've done in Peterborough. And I'm so excited to see what you do next. I want to take you out for lunch or dinner or something. So does Matt. So does a bunch of other people. So please answer my text. <laughs> I'll just be lurking in the corner watching. What? <laughs> Tiffany will come too. <laughs> He'll be, he will be a guest on the Tiffany show at some point. I've, I've kind of locked him in for so sure. I'll be lurking That's somewhere. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a lurk off. <laughs> you can't get rid of me, Stu. <laughs> Shout out to you, Stu. Stu's News. If you know a new business or business news coming out, reach out to Stu's News. Send him the lead. He's in the business. So, Miriam, back to you, friend. All right, Tiffany. If we could have one word that described Miriam, what is it? Relentless. Ooh, yes. You are relentless. Yep, like a dog on a bone. You will not give up. Keep going. You've got a strong why. Yeah. And what's the worst thing that could happen? You're right. You're right. Just jump. Uh, book you're reading right now. What are you reading? Who's uh, or who's on your list? I actually a really good book I'm reading. We're just finished reading right now uh, for school. Hmm. Um, is called Canada's Other Red Scare. And it's by a man whose last name is Rutherford. Uh, and it covers the span of a few years and a few key moments within the Indigenous rights movement in Canada. Oh. It's well written. Yeah. It's missing the perspective of women and the work Indigenous women were doing at the time. But I put that in my paper. Um, it's, it's a good read and I highly, highly recommend it. Excellent. I love to read and get those perspectives too, right? What were you going to say? I cut you off. Um, another good book that's on my nightstand right now is the book Neil Morton wrote with oh Cody. God. Yep, totally. On what if he could? Too. Like, if I ever teach a course, that's going to be required reading. It's small, it's got graphics, but it's like a lot of really helpful life hacks. Yes. Spe especially for entrepreneur startups, like condensed into one very easy read. And I love that they put enough space on the pages in that book for you to make yeah. notes. Just note the heck out of it and, and kind of whatever speaks to you, you can highlight throughout. You're right. Good. Excellent book. There's a few local authors that are that are really amazing. And Ann no Douglas's one. book. I Ooh. want to read that. Ann Douglas's new book. Oh, yes. There are lots of very and I know. Cool I was thinking about Rob, Bob Govro with The Wealthy yeah. Entrepreneur. That's right. He's yeah. doing well, eh? Look, right? Hey, I you're going to be working with I him. will be. Be nice to Coming her. Coming in hot. He already promised. It was the sweetest thing in the in Chamber of Commerce. They had put out a post and they did. Govro's team commented, we promised to take good care of her. So okay. I was like, oh my heart. As they should. Like, she's pretty awesome. <laughs> Back to you, Miriam. Last two questions. Oh, okay. So I told you she already has lots of questions. Back to business. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who's on your playlist? What, what jams are you rocking right now? And what is your vibe? Oh my gosh, I'll show you. Yeah, open Let's it up. That. I mean, local radio first, of course, yes. always. But Definitely. if you had your own playlist that you created. I do. You? I have several playlists. And like. I have one called My Chill Melancholy that I like to lean into when I'm. <laughs> okay. You know what? Like, 
you and I, I feel like you and I need to hang out more. Okay, so Ooh, I have Joni Mitchell, Pearl Jam, Sam Cooke. Who doesn't love Sam Cooke? I love him. And then, you know, let's see. I've started a baby playlist. So Aww. if you have any advice for baby songs, send them. Put it in the comments. I have a garden party and house party list. And those are songs that I use at dance parties I host by myself. <laughs> um, and then... There's a, there's a, you know, post politics, eat, love, pray, um, be pray, love list of songs that help me heal. And then on days where I'm like ready to take on the world, yes, I have a playlist for that too. You've got to run the world. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. I think mine's called pumped up. Nice. Yeah. I like how we can all name our playlist now. Yeah. There's also an angry one I have called only Zool. Ooh. <laughs> It's when you're in that vibe, right? You got to really lean in. I like to lean into my feelings. You music, should. Right? It's healthy. You know what? I'm going to start an angry playlist. Right? Send me your angry songs too. Send <laughs> so, Miriam your angry Baby songs. songs and angry yeah, songs. Yeah, that's Balance. what we're looking for. <laughs> Miriam, very last question for the Tiffany show today, my friend. It's actually not a question at all. Who do you want to shout out? Any business, any person, any one it's just shout out time. You get to plug whatever you want. We go into Silver Bean. Silver Bean closes and then it's gone. That's true. We get it. We get it for a couple, couple months yeah. and that's it. Yes, that's fair. All right. So if I'm still standing, it's because of a lot of people who've held me together, who've pumped me up, who've helped build me back up. But one person in particular needs to be recognized, particularly this week. And that is the Honorable Andy Mitchell. Andy Mitchell. Andy Mitchell just uh, wrapped up 50 years of public service, most recently. 50 years, I'm pretty sure. Whoa. Um, he is, let me look up the Peterborough Examiner article so that I do this yes. right. We're gonna quote because Peterborough I've Examiner. known him for a long time. Andy Mitchell has been the mayor of Selwyn uh, for the last term, you know, equally important he was the chair of peterborough public health during the pandemic oh my gosh and what this man did yep. in that role is incredible he he's smart he was a you know former cabinet minister but he's smart he's kind he gets things done he talks about things in buckets of three um and like Stu, um and that breed of good men he has devoted a lot of his time and energy to supporting particularly other women step up into leadership positions that you know aren't usually welcoming for us so there it is andy mitchell shout out to you 30 years there's an article about him in the peterborough examiner yesterday former liberal federal cabinet minister andy mitchell retiring after nearly 30 years 30 in politics. Years. The changes, Andy, I'd like to see his laundry list of, of things he's had his hand in. Yeah, he he better write a book. Yeah, ooh. And then, like, also shout out to Peterborough's Rhonda Barnett. She's going to be representing <gasps> us at the Global Manufacturing Forum for the second time. She's one of two women stepping up for us. So shout out to you, Rhonda. And Rhonda's a builder who shows up for other women, too. I'm a big, big fan. Awesome. Good shout outs today, Mary. I have more, but, you know, next show. That's we're, all right. We're making penne pasta. Penne for your thoughts. That's right. Yeah. Penne for your thoughts. We're making pasta. Miriam, one last clink to you, my friend. Cheers to you. Cheers. Love that. Thank you. Euphoria Cafe. Thank you for having us. Miriam. I cannot thank you enough. I appreciate you so much. My pleasure, my friend. Have a great day, y'all. Stay positive. Stay safe. This is the Tiffany Show.